Good afternoon, folks. Welcome to another episode of Walking with Willie. I'm your host, Willie, and now it's time to go for a little walk. I come to you from high atop the Kishva page, the little Shvabian hill. You can just about make out above overhead there, the city of Budapest. And today I would like to discuss one of my favorite subjects in the entire world, early Hungarian history. The story of how a pagan tribe of nomadic horse lords stormed through the Carpathian Basin and settled the modern Christian state as we know it today. Oh, yes, oh, Jesus. So the Hungarian horse lords are these nomadic, roving tribes and unsettled people, a mix, a mash, a smorgasbord, a swirly whirl, if you will, of all sorts of different peoples that inhabited the Ukrainian, Russian, Siberian steppe lands, a Finno-Ugric tribe. And as they come eastwards, they begin to mix with all different sorts of people, Avars, Turkic Pechenegs, Bulgars, and all these sort of different mishmashed peoples that inhabited this area just west of Russia, coming down into the Carpathian Mountains and over to where the Hungarians eventually settled in the Carpathian Basin. So you have these roving tribe of nomads that come in and they find this beautiful, bountiful, flat pancake of a land, and they say, yeah, let's set up shop for a little while. You can imagine why. Now the mythic version of that story is a little more interesting. Basically, there is this enormous falcon, an eagle of sorts, called the Turl. And the Turl, oh, look at those purples right there, delightful. And the Turl falcon carried a sword in his claws, and he flew overhead of these nomadic horse lord tribes, and he found the Hungarian land, and he dropped his sword, and he said, yes, that's where you shall settle. So you had seven tribal confederacies that made up the Magyars back then. At the head of it was a guy named Arpad, and he was the son of a famous tribal leader named Almosh, whose mother, Rameshe, was actually said to have been impregnated by the Turl Falcon itself. Whether to believe that or not, the choice is yours. But the point of the matter is that Arpad gained the loyalty of these six other chieftains, and they swore a magnificent blood oath before they decided to unite and storm over the Carpathian Mountains and into the basin to claim what they believed to be their ancestral birthright, the Hon Faglalalash, or the conquest. Now the word conquest is a tiny bit of a misnomer. Not that the Hungarians weren't able to conquer the peoples that they came across, but the fact of the matter is there weren't too many people there. It was a very lightly populated regions of descendants from Attila and his Huns, different groups of Avars, a scattering of Pechenegs, I'm a, a Pechenegs. loose <laughs> scattering me. of different tribes. And the Hungarians, who were brave and fearsome and well-known fighters all around Europe, made very short work of their opponents. Now, the modern Hungarian tradition holds that this conquest was completed in 896, so the end of the 9th century. And over the next 100 years, you have what is known in Hungarian as the Kaland, Kaland Ozasho, Azasho, not Azasho. the time of adventures. And this time of adventures is probably one of my favorite periods of history for any group that exists anywhere in the world. Because what you had during this time of adventures were these fearsome Magyar horse lords storming all throughout Europe. I mean, we have evidence that they went as far as Spain and Portugal. So they were everywhere and they were feared by the Europeans. Now this was a time of chivalry and heavy knights on sturdy horseback. And the Hungarians were different <laughs> than that. In place of this chain mail, steel plate armor, the Hungarians were light. They were flexible, they were agile, and they were utterly demonic. And they patented a form of fighting that became so feared throughout Europe that there was a saying at the time, Lord, save us from the terror of the Hungarian archers. And basically the reason that they were so terrifying was what the Hungarians would do using technology that they adopted from all their intermingling with these uh, scattered tribes around 
the Balkans and the Ukrainian steppe lands. They adopted this form of ironworking that allowed them to make metal stirrups for their horses. So the Hungarians would come through into battle against these very sturdy, rigid European foes, and they would charge like hellfire. And they would charge in, and then all of a sudden, they would go back and fake a retreat. But of course, the Europeans, they thought they were actually retreating. They're like, oh, ho, we got big bad armor. The Hungarians are scared of us. But little did they know that with these light, flexible, quick horses and their iron stirrups and their arrows, while retreating and being chased and pursued by the European foe, the Hungarians would do a little spin in the stirrups and start firing backwards while the horse was running one way. The Hungarians would <laughs> fling their arrows into the pursuing enemy and make an absolute slaughter, an absolute slaughter of their opponents. And then, of course, they could turn their horses around, come in, and hit them with their swords. This was a technique that it took the Europeans many, many years to figure out how to stop. Oh, what do we have here? Video Master Studio. Trenchen ut Harmens Harum. Okay, very interesting. We're up here on the Isten Hedge, the God Hill, District 12, Keruleten, Pizenkatu. And let's just say that this is a little bit of a fancy part of Budapest. You got a lot of big mansions, sprawling houses with views into the city proper. It's a magnificent place to raise a family if you can afford it. Now, we were talking about the Hungarian actions through Europe at the time. After they settled into the Carpathian Basin, they planted the flag, united under Arpad with the seven chieftains, and they said, okay, we're gonna have one leader and we're gonna call this land our home. Now, the other interesting part about this time of adventuring is that the Hungarians then were paganistic folk. They were very shaman influenced. They had polytheistic gods and they weren't constrained by the moral rigors of Christianity in the way that their foes to the West under the leadership of the Pope and their foes to the East under the leadership of Byzantium and the Orthodox Church were constrained. So the Hungarians were very free to sort of do what they would and oh did they. Oh yes, I've been working on the railroad all the live a long day. They were basically a landlocked version of the Vikings and they did not join the ranks of Western Europe as a settled sedentary Christian state until a hundred years after the Honfaglalash, aka the conquest, which took place in 896, when under the leadership of King Istvan in the year 1000 on the nose, they accepted an invitation from Pope Sylvester II and became a formal Christian nation. Yes, 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 indeed. I love Hungarian history. It's so unique compared to some of the other European traditions. Uh, and this stems to their language, it manifests in their cultural traditions. Even to today, the Hungarians have a lot of very idiosyncratic, unique things about their culture that you don't find in the cultures of similar places just next door. Here we have two fine folks. Let's see what they are up to. They got their masks on, very nice. You wanna put? Oh, there is the train. Yes, this, let's enjoy it. Look at this little 64 train. Oh, wow. Brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. I'm so honored to be able to bring this to you. Oh, and we're watching the gauge change live. Look at that rumble. Yes. Wow. Spectacular. Spectacular, spectacular, spectacular. Yes. Budapest. Ha 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 ha. So close, yet so far. I can't wait to explore with you all further as we go on this shared odyssey together. People sometimes ask me, what's your goal? And I think that my goal, if I can state it right now, would be to be a cultural correspondent for people around the world. To be able to put a smile on the faces of millions through an appreciation of different cultures. And right now, 
that's hungry because that's where I live. And that's, to be honest with you, where I'm restricted to. But man, what a place to be restricted to. I love this country. It's been an adopted home of mine for two years. And from the history to the culture to the people, I couldn't love it anymore. I feel truly touched and honored and blessed to be an adopted Magyar. Delightful. Yanapot. All you need is a little yo napot. You can see through here some of the house styles that we have back in this area. Oh, a little doggy's coming up to me. Let's see if he's friendly. Oh, he is not friendly. He is a guard dog. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's going on, buddy? How you doing? Just as I was beginning to feel very welcome back here. If you're curious what the secret is to making friends in Hungary, learn the word for hello, Yonapot, and say it to as many people as possible with a big old smile on your face. And that's really the trick for making friends anywhere. Learn the local word for hello and say it with a smile. And the people, I promise you, will be attracted like bees to honey. Actually, I don't think bees are attracted to honey. They just produce honey. Neither here nor there. The advice still stands. Yonapot, how you doing? Sent Janos Korhas? Yes. Ah, cool. Hello. Tokyo. Uh, hoy chivnak. Uh huh. Vilmos. Yeah. Uh, elek Budapesten két éve és barat nem magyar dolgozok Budapesten, de Amerikai vagyok. Ah, köszönöm szépen. Nagyon nehéz nyelv, de szép nyelv, szép. Aha, aha. Egészség. Egészség, egészség. Cheers. You see, all you need is a Yonapot. All you need is a Yonapot. It's just so fascinating how you went from this history of bloodthirsty nomadic horse lords to a friendly nation that is ever welcoming and so, so eager for camaraderie. As I am myself which is probably why we see eye to eye so well. This has been another episode of Walking with Willie. I hope that this finds you well. Remember, this too shall pass, and we will get through this together for the better. Love you all. Have a lovely, wonderful day. Thanks for watching, folks. That was an absolute pleasure as always. I appreciate all of you. At Willie Geverts, have a go.co. Tell your friends, tell your loved ones, tell the creepy guy next door.